Big thanks to Ren for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below to calculate and offset your carbon footprint. Hi everyone, Path here, and in this video I want to talk about how probability, the chance of something happening, can flow through space, like a fluid, in the theory of quantum mechanics. Pretty strange idea, but really fun to think about. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. In order to understand this concept, we first need to think about some basics of quantum mechanics. Let's imagine we're studying a very simple system, which is just a single particle in an otherwise empty region of space. In the theory of quantum mechanics, we describe this system using something called a wave function. This is basically a mathematical function that has all the information we can know about the system. For example, we can take the wave function of our system, our particle, and we can square it. Now, technically we're taking its square modulus. Then we can work out a part of the area under this square modulus function. And that area directly tells us the probability of us finding the particle in this region of space. So in this particular example, our particle is more likely to be found between these two points than between these two points. And of course, when we actually make a measurement in order to try and find the particle, we could find it in any of these regions. But if we repeated the experiment over and over, we would see the particle was found most often in this region and less often here. And of course, we've just looked at the likelihood of the particle being found at different positions along one single dimension, in this case, left to right or the x direction. But we could extend this to two or three dimensions also, with the mathematics and diagrams becoming a little more complicated, but the logic being the same. Now, here's the thing. A system's wave function generally changes over time. Not always, it depends on the system and its surroundings, but in general, the wave function does change. How it changes or not is determined by the Schrodinger equation. This is the big important equation in the theory of quantum mechanics. I've made lots of videos about it, but if you want to get a detailed overview of the equation, then please check out this video up here. It basically just tells us how the wave function should change over time, depending on the system and its surroundings. And if the wave function changes over time, then the probability of finding our particle also changes over time. We can almost think of the probability as flowing through space as the wave function changes. So am I seriously sitting here making this video just to tell you that the probability of finding our particle changes over time, and so we should think of this as probability flowing? No. In reality, this description of probability flowing like a fluid is even more specific. But before we look at this, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Ren. We've all heard about the climate crisis at this point, and I think that there's something that we can all do to help, whether that's encouraging companies and governments to take this issue seriously, or reducing our own carbon footprint. So I was very happy when Ren got in touch with me looking to sponsor one of my videos. Ren is a simple but effective way to make a difference in the climate crisis. Their website, linked down below, allows you to actually calculate your own carbon footprint and then look at different ways to reduce it. You can also make a monthly contribution to offset your footprint because it goes towards funding diverse carbon reduction projects like tree planting, mineral weathering, and rainforest protection. REN will then meticulously quantify what impact each project is having and send you monthly updates, so you can be sure it's making a difference. They're obviously working on lots of different projects, including this particular one that I found very interesting. The idea is that unused and degraded land is bought up. It's then restored with techniques such as reforestation and peatland restoration, at which point small bits of basalt rock are spread over the forest land. Chemical reactions between compounds found in the basalt rock and the carbonic acid held in rainwater will then result in the formation of certain solid minerals like calcium carbonate. This process is effectively trapping carbon, reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So I find this pretty cool. So if you'd like to calculate your carbon footprint and find out more about REN, then please check out the first link in the description box below. It helps out the channel, of course, and the first 100 of you to sign up using that link will get 10 extra trees planted in your name. Big thanks to REN once again. Now let's get back to our topic at hand. With a bit of mathematical manipulation, we can derive an equation that looks like this. 
Looks pretty intense, but here's what the terms mean. Rho represents the square modulus of our wave function, the exact same thing we calculated earlier in order to find the probability of our particle being found in a particular region of space. Now remember, we had to find the area under our row function between two points in space in order to work out the probability that a particle would be found between these two points. If we extend this logic to multiple dimensions, then we can essentially calculate the probability of finding our particle in a given volume rather than between two points on a straight line. And as a result of this, we can think of rho or the square modulus of the wave function as a probability density, the probability per unit volume. So that's what rho represents. Now let's talk about this whole term, partial d rho by dt. This represents the rate of change of our probability density or how quickly our probability density changes over time. That will become important in a second. Thirdly, let's look at this term here, j. J represents what is known as the probability current. We might have heard the term current used in a different context when describing electric current. That represents the motion of charged particles. And similarly, probability current represents the motion of probability, which is an abstract concept, but something that can be precisely calculated over time. By the way, if you want to find out more about what this downward pointing triangle represents, then check out this video up here. Now, here's the thing. This equation is exactly the same as the one we can use to describe the flow of certain fluids through space and over time. If rho was used to represent fluid density rather than probability density, and j was fluid current rather than probability current, then the equation that would be used to describe how the fluid flows is exactly this one. It's quite famous and is known as the continuity equation. The continuity equation basically tells us something quite logical. Let's think about a region of space through which a fluid, let's say fruit juice, is flowing. The continuity equation simply says that the amount of fluid that is flowing into this region of space is equal to the amount that gets stored in this region plus the amount that flows out. Seems fairly logical, but this only applies because of our assumption that the mass of the fluid should be conserved that the fluid cannot somehow magically be created or destroyed. Again, check out the continuity equation video for a more detailed description of this. But what's really interesting is that a rather abstract concept like probability can also flow through space and time in a really similar way to a real physical fluid. On the surface, there's not really an intuitive or obvious reason as to why this should be the case. But if we think about how a real system should behave in terms of its probability and how that changes over time, then it seems to make sense. And of course, if we do a lot of mathematics using quantum theory, we find out exactly the same thing. And this is why we can talk about the flow of probability and almost treat this weird abstract concept like a physical fluid. And with all of that being said, I'm going to finish up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Check out my merch linked in the description below. It features a quantum dice design based on a famous quote from Albert Einstein. And finally, I'd like to thank my Giga patrons and all of my other patrons over on my Patreon page, which is also linked down below if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.